Welcome participants. Now we are moving to lecture number 4 in week number 6. So, today the topic is fabric calculations. So, in this week we are doing lot of calculation related to knitting. Today I am going to introduce you some calculation uh, related to fabric. So, some useful relations I will provide to you which will be very useful or especially very handy um, to express some fabric structural parameters. So, let us see what we are going to cover here. So, in fabric calculation there are four things I would like to focus. The first one is loop length. So, how with the help of some machine parameters you can be able to theoretically calculate the loop length. Fabric width, fabric length and GSM. So, today I am going to give you some important relationship where you can theoretically measure these parameters and you can compare those with experimental values. So, experiment values I have already introduced you in some of the lab demos, how you can calculate loop length uh, especially in week number 1 and week number 3 for single jersey fabric, double jersey fabric. Um, I also help you to calculate GSM of the fabrics, but now let us let us see how the relationship are defined. Um, for this, so that you, when you do the comparison, you can have the fair idea of uh, how these theoretical values can be very useful um, in predicting fabric properties. So, let us let us start with the first one loop length. So, we have seen that loop is the integral part of any net structure. So, naturally loop length is very very important for any knit fabric structure and we have seen that these loops are created on machine. So, on the machine we have seen the needles which are placed on the tricks. So, you have seen the needles are placed on the bed between the tricks. So, these walls are the trick walls and between these two trick walls the needles are placed and they are pulling the yarn inside the bed. Okay. So, to calculate the loop length we can find out how much the needle actually pulls the yarn inside the bed. So, in one of the lecture I might have given you one unit x. So, this unit x indicates how much the needle is pulling the yarn inside the bed. So, if you take one of the needle, um, I am projecting this needle on the right side and this is the two wedge, these two walls. So, these two walls are denoted here and you can see it here that this needle is pulling the yarn inside. So, when it is pulling the yarn, this is the actual length of yarn which is being pulled and once the feeder goes away from the needle, this length of the yarn is actually making this loop because when the old loop is knocked out, it bend this straight segment of yarn in the form of loop. So, if we can find out the distance of this yarn length that will be equals to loop length. So, to find out the theoretical value of loop length, two machine parameters is very very important. One is x which is the distance moved by the needle or distance pulled by the needle to the filament inside the bed. So, from the bed corner how much each needle is going inside. So, x is somehow connected with a stitch setting. So, if you change the stitch cam setting, x will change. So, in one of the lecture I have also already shown you that how you can change the setting from 0 to 10. At 10 it means the, the needle is catching or pulling the yarn to the fastest from the bed corner and when x is, uh, um, x is less when you keep the stitch cam setting 0. So, 0 means minimum pulling and 
and 10 means maximum pooling. Okay. So, this stitch cam setting can be changed and once you change the stitch cam setting, x will change automatically. So, once you know the x, to find the distance of this yarn length, we need another measurable quantity which is fixed on the needle bed is the distance between two walls. So, distance between these two walls. So, this distance between these two walls is nothing but the pitch which is defined as P. So, P is equals to pitch and we have already defined the pitch as 1 by machine gauge. Okay. So, to find the length of this yarn, we can make a triangle whose hypotenuse is half of loop length this is L by 2, L is the loop length, x is the distance which is being pulled inside the bed by the needle and P by 2 is the half of the distance, this is P by 2. Okay. So, once you know P by 2 and x quantity which is directly dependent on the machine setting, P by 2 is the half of machine pitch, x is the x depends on the stitch cam setting. So, these two variables are constant, it depends on the machine parameters. So, you can simply find out the loop length. So, L by 2 square is equals to x square plus P by 2 square. So, with this L is equals to x square 4 times x square plus p square. Okay. So, L is equals to 4 times x square plus p square. So, this is theoretical loop length. This is theoretical loop length. So, once you know the theoretical loop length, by machine parameters x and p, you can find out the experimental value of loop length which I have already introduced in the previous lectures. You can then compare these two values and you can uh, find out the actual loop length. So, this relationship is very, very useful. Now, let us come to the second fabric properties which is very, very important is GSM. So, GSM is actually defined as gram per square meter. So, if you take a area of the fabric, what is the weight per unit area that is defined by GSM. So, GSM here the weight is in defined is in gram and the area is 1 meter square. So, to find out the GSM with respect to other parameters, there is a very useful relationship is uh, derived, which uh, I am going to express it here also. So, to find the GSM, there are three quantities we basically need. First one is loop length. If we know the loop length, length of one loop, if we know the stitch density, which is nothing but number of loops per unit area okay, and yarn text. Let us denote this as a T. So, if you know these three quantity, you could be able to get the GSM, these three quantity. So, let us see how. So, obviously, since we are expressing this in gram per square meter. So, we need to also define the unit of measurement. So, for example, let us suppose we are defining the loop length in meter. Naturally, um, in, in practice, we measure the loop length in mm and then we can convert this into meter. We measure the stitch density 
is uh, number of loops per unit area as multiplication of cores per inch and wells per inch. So, we can imagine the unit of S is loops per meter square. So, I am keeping the unit of uh, distance as meter and yarn text T is defined as gram per 1000 meter of yarn. Okay. This is how we define the yarn text. So, if you take 1000 meter of yarn, T is gram is there. So, gram per 1000 meter. So, this is the unit. So, to find out the GSM which by definition is the weight of the fabric per unit area. So, we need to first find out how many loops are there in 1 square meter. So, in 1 meter square number of loops this is nothing but stitch density. So, S number of loops are present in 1 meter square. This is how we defined the stitch density okay? because S is, S is number of loops per meter square. So, in 1 meter square number of loop is S. So, in 1 meter square of the fabric you know how many loops are there. So, you can find out total length of yarn used in S loops is nothing but S into loop length because one loop require L length of yarn to make. So, definitely when you want to make S loops, S loops then you simply multiply with the length of one loop. So, S into L is the total length of the yarn which is consumed by the fabric in making S loops. So, once you know the length of the yarn, you can find out the weight of the yarn which is utilized here. So, 1000 meter has the weight T gram. So, 1000 meter has T gram. Okay? This is how we define text. So, naturally when you have S into L, this unit is also in meter. So, S into L meter should be having T by 1000 into S into L gram. Okay. So, this much length of yarn is having the weight this and we already know this much length of yarn the area is occupied is equals to 1 meter square. So, naturally the GSM is weight per unit area. So, weight is T by 1000 into S into L and what is the area? Just 1 meter square. Okay. So, T into S into L divided by 1000. This is in gram per meter square. So, T is the yarn tax. S is the number of loops per meter square, L is the loop length okay? and 1000 um, is just the unit. So, so you need to be very, very careful how you are calculating the loops, um, what is the unit of uh, loop length and what is the unit of S. So, if you change the unit, for example, if you are calculating number of loops per inch square, you need to convert S into loops per meter square and then you have to use this formula. So, unit is extremely important and I expect all of you to follow the unit properly. Now, let us see the third relationship which is directly connected with fabric width and length. This is uh, very, very easy. So, if you want to find out the width of the fabric, naturally width is related with the number of columns. So, if we have more veils, the width will be more. So, on, on the machine one needle is making one loop or one column. Okay? So, if we know the number of needles which is let us suppose n, n number of needles is used 
in making this fabric. And if we know the distance between two column as a w, w is veil spacing. I have also introduced this in the week number 1, which is nothing but 1 by capital W. So, capital W is nothing but veils per unit length. So, if you know the distance between two column as a small w and if you know the number of needles, you can find out the fabric width. So, fabric width is nothing but n into a small w or n into 1 by capital W. So, so the unit of length according to which you are calculating W that will be automatically the unit of fabric width. So, if you are calculating W as veils per inch then fabric width will be inch. If you are calculating veils per meter then the unit will be in meter. Similarly, if you know the number of courses, number of courses which you make on the machine that will decide how many times you traverse you, the cam jacket from one side to other. So, if let us suppose if you have taken 100 traverse on the machines, naturally you are making 100 courses. So, if you know the number of courses and if you know the course spacing, course spacing which is nothing but distance between two courses. So, this is first course, this is second course. So, if you know this distance which is small c distance between two courses you can which will be equals to 1 by capital C. Capital C is nothing but courses per unit length. So, once you know n c and small c you can find out the fabric length. So, fabric length will be n c into a small c or n c into 1 by capital C. So, whatever you feel comfortable. So, this was the fabric width and length. Uh, so, you can see everywhere if you understand the machine parameters and if you know little bit of variables, you can be able to find out the GSM, GSM theoretically which is related with this. You can also find out fabric width and length. So, fabric width is this much and fabric length is this and also you can find out the loop length. So, all the structural parameters loop length, fabric width and length and GSM can be calculated. Let us now solve a very simple um, example and then we finish this lecture. So, let us see this question. Find the GSM, GSM is defined as gram per square meter of the plain knit fabric given loop length is 1 centimeter, course per inch is 15, veils per inch is 20 and yarn count is 30 tacks. So, as per the formula of GSM, we have to use this equation T S L into 1000. So, so, to finding the GSM, the values which is given to us, loop length is 1 centimeter, capital C is 15 courses per inch, capital W 20 veils per inch and yarn count yarn tax is equals to 30. So, this is given to u and we need to find out the GSM. So, GSM we already know GSM is equals to T into S into L divided by 1000. Okay? This is the formula which we need to apply. So, we have to be very careful with the unit. So, if you remember 
when I was deriving this relation, the unit of T was tex, which is 30. So, it is perfectly fine 30 into unit of S was number of loops per meter square. So, we have to first find out the S. So, we know S is equals to C into W, which is nothing but 15 into 20 loops per inch square. So, 15 into 20 it is 300 loops per inch square. So, here the unit of S is loops per inch square, we need to convert this into meter square. So, you can uh, put the value of inch into meter. So, once you will do it, this will be equals to 465000 loops per meter square. So, now you can use 465000 here, it's 500. Now, the unit of L was in meter, which is loop length. So, L is 1 centimeter, you can convert this into meter 0 0.01 meter. So, 0 0.01 meter divided by 1000, okay, divided by 1000. So, you can simply then, it is a very simple arithmetic, so that will come around 139.5 gram per meter square. Okay. So, I hope uh, you can see once you know some of the fabric structural well parameters, you can find out its weight per square meter. So, this relationship is extremely valuable. Now, let us uh, another simple example just for your clarity. Uh, here, uh, we will be finding out how many courses, how many whales are there in the fabric and what is the shrinkage. So, let us see the read, I am going to read this question. So, a single jersey fabric is produced using 60 needles. So, 60 needles on a flatbed machine, the gauge is given 10. The length and breadth of the fabric are 10 and 5 inch respectively. So, here the length is and breadth is given in dry relaxed state. The courses per inch of the fabric is 10. Okay and its loop length is 2 inch. So, what is given to you? Number of needles is 60, length of fabric is 10 inch, width of the fabric is 5 inch, width is 5 inch, courses per inch, courses per inch which is nothing but C is equals to 10 and loop length is 2 inch. Okay. So, find the total number of courses in the fabric. If you see the relation, we have already defined the fabric length is equals to n c into 1 by c. So, fabric length is given, n c we have to calculate, c is known to you. Okay. So, fabric length L is equals to number of courses into 1 by capital C or N is 10, NC we have to find out and 1 by C, C is nothing but 10 courses per inch. So, with this NC is equals to 10 into 10, 100 courses. 100 courses. Now, let us the second part find the whales per inch of the fabric. So, for finding whales per inch of the fabric, we know the fabric width is equals to n into 1 by w whales per inch. So, this we have to find out. So, fabric width, fabric width is equals to n into 1 by capital W, okay, where n is the number of needles and W is whales per inch. So, fabric width 
we have seen here the fabric width, you do not get confused with W. So, width is 5 inch because in the question it was given 5 inch fabric width. So, this is 5 inch and number of needles is 60 into 1 by W. So, this implies W is equal to 60 by 5 whales per inch. So, this is equal to 12, 12 whales per inch. Okay. Now, let us see the last part. After removal from the machine, find the shrinkage in the fabric along width direction. So, the width of the fabric which is given 5 inch is in the relaxed state and in the previous week I have shown you the relationship of shrinkage. Shrinkage is nothing but how much the fabric shrinks per unit original length. So, when you are making the fabric on the machine, the width is more, but once you take out the fabric from the machine, fabric will relax and the width will shrink. So, it is asking us what is the shrinkage. So, relax width is 5 inch. Now, we want to find out what is the width of the fabric on the machines. So, on the machine, we know how many needles are used and we know the gauge of the machine. So, naturally, so 60 needles has been occupied and we can find out that 60 needles, how much distance it is occupying on the machine. So, the fabric will be there up to 60 needles. So, on the machine, machine length of fabric is 60 times the pitch because you are using 60 needles in making the fabric and pitch is the distance between 2 needles. So, 60 into 1 by gauge. Okay. So, 60 and what is the gauge of the fab machine? This is nothing but 10, 10 needles per inch. So, 1 by 10. So, this is 6 inch. So, on the machine, the fabric length width was 6 inch and after you take out the fabric, fabric width was 5 inch. So, definitely the fabric has sink from 6 to 5. So, shrinkage shrinkage percentage is original length on of the fabric on the machine which is 6, final length of the fabric after relaxation is 5 divided by original length into 100. So, in percentage you can simply multiply by 100. So, once you solve this 1 by 6 into 100, this is equal to 16.67. So, you can see how uh, these relationships are so useful in understanding not only the machine variables, but also lot of physical and structural variables. So, I hope this is clear to you. In the next class, we are again going to cover some new topic uh, in knitting where some relationship can be useful in defining some other fabric properties. So, let us uh, wait for the next class. So, thank you very much for the listening.